Welcome to this new release demonstration brought to you by StorageCraft Asia Pacific. Today I am proud to share with you the new StorageCraft Shadow Protect SPX for Linux solution. Protect, recover and migrate your virtual and physical Linux servers quickly and reliably with StorageCraft Shadow Protect SPX. This has been built from the ground up and includes the same core functionality of the Shadow Protect you know today. StorageCraft is committed to supporting distributions of Linux with long-term support. For this release, SPX supports 64-bit versions of CentOS 6, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6, and Ubuntu 12.04. There is a list of supported kernel versions on the website. Without further ado, let's jump straight into a demonstration. So I've got a virtual machine running here. You can see it's using CentOS release 6.6. And if I go into file systems, here's a bunch of volumes that I've got mounted. So I've got my system and boot volumes and a data volume here. Now if I just close out of system monitor, I've also got here a mount to a network share, which is going to contain my backup images. If I click on the applications menu, go down to system tools, you'll see the new Shadow Protect SPX client. And there's also an icon I have on the desktop. When you first open SPX, you get the login window. Now this is showing me saved sessions or I can connect to a remote SPX client. I'm just going to log into my local session. The first thing that pops up when you log in for the first time is this cool new help overlay. This shows us the basic functions of this new interface. If we start on the top left, we can see the new SPX shield to create a backup job. And the second icon along is the destinations. The next thing is the backup jobs. So we can see I've got one listed here. It would show multiple jobs in this panel. On the left side, it shows us the job summary and the control. So I can pause or start that particular job as well as view the summary of the job and what it's actually going to do. On the right is the new paint and job timeline. So this allows us to navigate through the history events. This gives us a graphical view of the backup jobs event history. And then down the bottom, we've got the backup images for the selected timeline event. So we can see here it's been selected at this point in time. It's showing us the images that were created. If I go up to the right here and close out of the help overlay, we can now get a clear view of the SPX console. If I click on the shield for the new job, we can see all of this information in one place. So I can put in a job name, the destination, we can select an existing destination which is connecting to my mount. I can put in a comment here to explain what we are backing up. Compression, we can select none, standard or best. Encryption, right up to AES 256 bit. Down the bottom for the volumes, we've got the select a scheme drop down, which is really cool. We can select all fixed volumes, for example, just the data volumes, just the system volumes, or we can custom select particular volumes that we're interested in backing up. So very easy to quickly select what you're wanting to back up. So on the schedule tab, we can specify the type of backup schedule we want to do. If I take a look at each of these very quickly, if we look at continuous incremental job, you'll notice that you need the storage craft image manager service as you previously have. Down here we can specify it to begin at perhaps 8 p.m. at night. So the initial full backup, which is going to have a little bit of impact, we can tell that to run at the end of the day. We've got a weekly schedule Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. I've selected that to repeat every 15 minutes. I could add in another weekly schedule, but instead of Monday to Friday, perhaps just Sunday and Saturday, I could have it backing up at m to 6 p.m., but perhaps just every hour. If I take a look at a mixed schedule, this closely resembles the Shadow Protect weekly and monthly options, except we can combine this into one job to make it easy. So again, we can tell it to begin at 8 p.m. for the first initial full but we can specify a schedule of when it does the full. So you might add in a monthly for the last day of the month and remove a weekly option. So we're just going to have one monthly full at 6 p.m. on the last day of the month. Repeat every month. On the right, the incremental schedule. So again, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. till 6 p.m., perhaps every 15 minutes. You could add in another weekly schedule where instead it's just going to back up in the weekends 
but perhaps every hour. So it allows us to be really flexible within one job. So that's the mixed schedule. This doesn't require image manager. It will use the SPX advanced options for specifying retention there. You can schedule a full backup, weekly, monthly, and a manual, which is a one-off full. Under advanced options, just really quickly, we've got some performance throttling options here. We can pre-configure scripts to run before and after backup jobs. We can define how the images are backed up and we can define retention. So if, if it's not a continuous incremental job, SPX can manage that. If I just click on cancel here, I've got my continuous incremental job here. If I right click, I can click start backup now, start an incremental or rebase. Very easy, click OK. You can see here it's gone green. This backup job typically takes around five seconds on this machine. So we can see very fast, no impact on my host or on my virtual machine environment. And if we take a quick look by selecting it in the timeline, we can see a bit of information about the backup size of each of them. Now, if we take a look at the destinations, obviously this is where I create a backup destination. So I can add in another path destination. And before I just went down into mount and selected my share that I have already pre-mounted. It's that easy. If I have multiple destinations, I can set one as a default. We take a look at the next option here is the image chain browser so again this will also connect to a destination so my backup share it's showing me the initial base images so i could select my database and then it shows me all of the image incrementals from that base so i can go and select one here and then i've got some options directly from here virtual boot mount the image restore volume or verify the image so i can do all of that straight from the image chain browser we close out of that and take a look at the next option, which is the mounted images. So if I click this, it would show me if I had an existing mounted image. The next option is the virtual boot. Now, because I'm running in a virtual machine, it is going to have an error. Although, if we just ignore that for the moment, we can see here the wizard. So it can add in the image files, give it a name, specify the memory and the networking to virtual boot straight off that backup image. And this will support Windows operating systems on Linux or Linux operating systems on Linux. So it will virtual boot any shadow protect backup file. And then I can uh, click the log out button to connect back into another client. On the job timeline, I get a lot of these functions directly from here as well. So for example, I can virtual boot straight from here from the backup at that point in time. I can also click on this option to view image information, mount the image, restore a volume, or verify the image. So I get all of this access straight from the console. I can access image files directly in the application with the image chain browser. I can mount, restore volume, or verify backup image, or use the virtual boot technology directly from the image chain browser or the job timeline feature. Got the extended virtual boot support. It's a native 64-bit application. And the new job scheduler with more flexible scheduling options. So thank you for your time and I hope this has been a valuable quick overview to see the new SPX interface for Linux. I will just add that Shadow Protect SPX is currently a version 1 release and the new release will include monitoring and management across Linux and Windows as well as additional support for Linux environments. We will also be having some more technical webinars coming soon. Refer to the link for our webinar registration page.